All right, we ready? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to New Kamak. The city's former sheriff, a Nosferatu named Bagger, said in a letter that a Sabbat biker gang called the Unholy Rollers was selling crystal meth on the southeast side of town. Darby followed this lead at a biker bar called the Rusty Tailpipe, where he narrowly avoided a bloodbath by convincing a biker named Brain Bucket that he was part of the Unholy Rollers and was administering a test to see if Brain Bucket was worthy of joining the gang. The biker was already selling meth for the gang, was not yet a member, and said that they were a very exclusive group who tests people to see if they're worthy. The group then went to a trailer park on the southeast side where they found the meth lab that was supplying the unholy rollers. Darby fed on the meth cook, trashed the place, and stole their entire stash of drugs before fleeing back to <laughs> Darby Manor. Earlier in the night, the group broke into Henrik Ibsen's skating rink, the home of the roller derby team, who are also called the Unholy Rollers. There, Darby used the deadly tongue granted to him by his diablerie of the horseman death to defile the floor of the rink with carvings of penises, ruining the team's ability to practice for their big match. Why did Darby get down and lick dicks into the ground? <laughs> Sorry, the ways lick dicks into the ground because the two unholy rollers were said to have been fighting each other in Club Wonderland. And Excava received 100 wireless hidden cameras in the mail after waiting for four days, which is the equivalent of how many sessions? Oh, uh. So 20 was well, like 18 24. months of yeah 24 so it was session, yeah. wow it was session 24 15 sessions when i ordered it and this is 39 yeah yeah this is a weird game archibald you received two text messages the first is from jasper boggs asking if it's time to bring onion jack's body to darby manor for burial the second is from Abraham Branson of Nukertech, who tells you that new MKT access cards have been created for each of you to pick up, or he's asking if you would like that to just be mailed to you. Uh, it is time for the burial, and uh, we'll pick them up, or one of us will. Okay. Uh, Jasper replies immediately that uh, he will head that way with Onion Jack's body shortly. I start digging. Is anyone else helping Archibald? Is anyone actually coming for, what was it, my bed? What, 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 <laughs> what do people think of Darby's that they are going to bury? Because Darby is vehemently against this. and He doesn't know about it yet, though. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's true. Did, I feel like I've been. I've oh, been did we tell you? Gearing up to defend my stuff for a few sessions now. No one has mentioned it to Darby in the conversations where it's happened. Darby was absent. Yeah. In the conversations where it was brought up that that was going to happen. Oops. Well, so <laughs> explain to me the logistics of how we're in all in Darby Manor and someone is going to steal my bed. Well, right now I'm digging a hole in the backyard. And that, yeah, apparently unmolested. I go to my room. <laughs> Augustine is He's smearing deep. tomatoes around Darby's room uh, under the justification of some sort of botanical ritual that is necessary to further empower the magnanimous Darby. Uh, but doing so very annoyingly in such a way as to dissuade Darby from wanting to dwell within his room. I have a feeling that, that that use of the word magnanimous was literally opposite of what would be appropriate <laughs> yeah. in this specific <laughs> yeah. situation. That's how mm -hmm. most of the words Augustine says are. Um, I'm wondering about the logistics of digging the hole and then bugs bunnying under the manor and then coming up for the bed. <laughs> You do not have whatever <laughs> stone man sea power. I can't remember what the gargoyle uh, 
Viseratica. Viseratica. There is Viseratica. a thing where you could do that, but you do not no, have it. No, unfortunately, I do not. Uh, so I'm just digging six feet, maybe, and I'm thinking maybe six feet ain't, ain't, ain't so, so far down. down. So far I down. would normally say that <laughs> digging, digging a grave... Hold size hole by yourself in one night might be impractical, but you have uh, potence, which I think makes it you know, within the like realms. Potence. I just imagine him not even digging it with a shovel. He's just hitting oh, it no, with a hammer. Oh, no, it's digging the hand. Just, just, just impact I'm using a, I'm using using a the shovel. <laughs> you have six strength dice, so I think it's, yeah, within your capability to, to get this done solo. Especially if Wonderful. it were a meaningful action for Archibald since his, this is a grave for his uh, very special Lover? friend. Lover? Yeah. His father's Lo- Loved one. Yeah. Beloved. <laughs> My beloved. Okay, I'm digging. Whatever, what's everybody else doing? I'm being really just, annoying in Darby's room. Ignore, ignoring tomatoes and trying to get into my room just just metagaming the shit out of this be in my bed <laughs> you don't know what's up is that really what he would do yeah i don't know we just got back from a night of terrorizing like what time is it it's late right i mean early slash late it is um about 4 a.m Sun's arising soon. I mean, yeah, about like two and a half hours, like two hours, 45 minutes. I'm distracted by my package. It came in the mail. Same, same. Oh, uh, but, well, <laughs> I, I had, I, as I was saying the words, I was like, oh no, yeah. joke's gonna. <laughs> Excavo, you also <laughs> notice your laptop uh, indicating to you that that real estate scan that you had set up uh, has concluded. Would you like to check that out? Oh, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, uh, yes. So. Uh, no. yes. yes. To recap, um, you are aware of there being uh, four, uh, four houses in Shedtown arranged in roughly the, where the points of a pentagram would be, uh, where uh, an occult ritual took place that made Shedtown not a place where you can uh, feed anymore. And you were trying to scan for roughly that same pattern um, drawn out in abandoned properties, like abandoned looking, like whatever would qualify as abandoned. Uh, properties that are up for sale uh, all across the state. And um, this was already going to be a difficult thing to uh, to get anything definitive about. Um, at first glance, when you see the results of this thing, trying to scan at different like scales and different orientations, just trying to find um, like five properties with like really low property values that like look uh, abandoned like whatever unassuming. that threshold is yeah um you can't find anything that seems to be a clear obvious pattern to you if you were if you're looking for 100 percent accurate matches to what you found oh, in new Kamak, you, you find zero if you're looking for 95% accurate matches, there are way too many overlapping ones to find any that seem like definitive, like, oh, here's a clear pattern. It just quickly turns into, uh, it's way too easy to see just like groups of five and it's way too fuzzy, like what you would call an abandoned property. Uh, And there's no accuracy sweet spot that provides anything that satisfies your... Uh, threshold for like what uh, like a hit for this uh, this search but because you are thorough and clever and got uh, several successes on that role uh, this script also brings up things like news articles and social media posts for properties in this data set that mention the word pentagram because that's ultimately what you were looking for and across the state you find about a dozen results 
and you're scanning over those results. Uh, five of them refer to uh, graffiti where pentagrams were spray painted on abandoned buildings. You take a glance at some of those. It doesn't seem really relevant. It was pentagrams just spray painted on walls. No mention of mutilated animals or anything like that. So it kind of seems like just normal graffiti. Uh, in 2001, in Westville, Indiana, located near the border of the state with the border with uh, Illinois, I think, uh, a homeowner complained in a message board about buyers being scared off because of satanic rituals taking place in the large junkyard to the west of her. You check up on that story in the city's newspaper, the Westville Indicator, indeed has an article confirming that the owner of the junkyard contacted the police to report that someone had broken in and placed dismembered animals in pentagrams in several locations around his property. That article has comments from two other people saying that similar vandalism had taken place in other locations in and near the town, including in a storage facility and a baseball field. In 2009, a Facebook group for a Terre Haute, Indiana news or, uh, neighborhood association posted a warning about what they called a pagan cult committing animal abuse and vandalism throughout their neighborhood, and they're arguing over who is responsible. In the comment thread, local residents described finding this vandalism in alleys, parking lots, and inside abandoned houses. Three pictures are posted showing confirmation that what happened in Shedtown indeed took place that year, 2009, in Terre Haute, in an empty building that used to be a bank, in an alley behind an electrical substation, and on the roof of a gas station in a moderately busy intersection. The final comment is from a woman who speculates that it's a widespread teenage internet trend because she heard from friends that the exact same kind of animal abuse and vandalism happened in two cities in Illinois in the last few years. Okay, so this is getting around. Conclusions you can draw from this is uh, it seems like the exact same thing that happened in Shedtown has happened in other cities, in Indiana and Illinois at least, that there's nothing special about abandoned houses because it seems like this ritual can happen in any kind of structure or even outside. And uh, it has apparently been happening since at least 2001 in the Midwest. Man, those kids have really escalated their pranks. Like, they should have stuck to Tide Pods, man. Why are they got to be really animals? No, no, this is before the Tide Pods. This, this is 2001. Oh, Tide Pods Tide actually Pods distracted just... them from this. <laughs> it made them yeah. forget that jet fuel can't melt steel beams. <laughs> that was them trying to get clean. Wake up, Sheeple. <laughs> yeah, wake up. wake up. Oh, gosh. Okay. So since 2001, I'm that curious is, if there's that's something the special thing that, that happened find. that year in the, like vampire lore or anything of well, that nature. There was vampire 9-11. Or not just like, you know, 9-11. <laughs> well, the va- the vampire twin towers also fell in 2001. Not 9-11, but the ones are like fangs. I- <laughs> Never forget because you have an eidetic memory. <laughs> wow. Um, well, 2001 is just the Good job, team. earliest that you found um uh, mm-hmm. a hit and earlier yeah, than 2001 earlier i mean they can't really do a lot of social listening if there's no social media exactly yeah. so yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean anything started it just started yeah. confirmably started being talked about in this part of the country on the internet around that time see i'd be curious to go to the library but i uh well, last I don't time want to go to the library alone. <laughs> I, I don't want to go alone. It's a very dangerous place. I, I guess. <laughs> I took an L at the library, so... Uh, um, okay, this is a lot to chew on. Do you have this written out? <laughs> uh, I do, yes. I can send that to you. Okay. So I, I was trying, but I'm like... Ugh. 
So, uh, so Jasper Boggs, um, you uh, you see an an old rickety loud pickup truck uh, slowly coming up the driveway, and uh, the headlights illuminate the progress Archibald that you have made on uh, on Jack's grave, uh, and you're almost done by the time Jasper uh, rolls up. And, uh, and he gets out of the car and, uh, he walks up to you. Hello, Jasper. Why, hello there, Archibald. I've about got the hole done. Uh, grab a shovel if you'd like to contribute. Oh, yeah, I'd be, of course, I'd be happy to help you. I got, uh, got old Jack in the back of the truck there and you see, like, some feet poking out the back with a, with a sheet respectfully draped over them. Um, he grabs a nearby shovel, uh, and he hops down into the hole with you and starts helping you, uh, like throw dirt out. And he says to you, well, I, I noticed that none of your friends are helping you out with, uh, with this, this hole digging. Um, what's I'm uh, the real digger of the group, you see. Say, what about you, Jasper? Do you spend a lot of hole time? Uh, well, uh, I don't have, uh... <laughs> Well, there's the the mine, of course. We uh, most of what uh, we do is digging in holes. One of the finest holes there is. Yeah, in fact, my crew, I I think, is some of the best hole diggers that you could find. But uh, I really should have waited for them to get here before I did this all myself. Probably. Well, no, um, they're not coming. Uh, oh, is it just us? Yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's just gonna be you and me. Um, they. Knew about this. Uh, I asked him if they would come help me because, of course, digging holes is uh, is tough work, as they know. And they're they're all free. They they don't have anything. I mean, it's it's pert near uh, four in the morning. They uh, they're not even asleep. They're up partying, and uh, they just um, I don't know. It feels like uh, over the last twenty four hours, for some mysterious reason, we had. Uh, some sort of fallen out, and they just, uh, they didn't want to help me bring oh. Jack into the car. I, oh, no. I, I, I didn't do nothing against them. I, I don't understand why they would be treating me this way, but just... Oh, no. For some... Well, I, I can understand having fair-weather friends. It seems sometimes, oh. like, whenever one thing goes wrong, like your best friend dying, everyone just starts to turn on you and nobody listens to you anymore. Well, what I think happened was I, I just didn't know how to do a proper funeral. And when they saw the way we did it with Jack just on the ground and everyone standing around and, and saying things, I, I, I assumed they disapproved of how I did the funeral. And they... Noticed that I didn't have a plan for how to inter my, my poor brother's body, and uh, and that reflected poorly on me. And now they uh, they just they don't respect me. But uh, well, you know what? Let's uh, let's make it up, not to them, but to Jack. Let's head inside the house and get his casket. And. At the- and with that, the last of the dirt is out, and it looks you have a, a roughly. California king sized six yeah. foot hole. Only the finest. Is that how big uh, the bed is? We're about <laughs> Okay, we go to We're about we this go to point Darby's room. With nice. tomato smear on both hands dripping and looking satisfying at the walls of Darby's room, adequately covered in paste. Um I turn to Darby, who I assume is still on his bed. I do declare, my good man, at this time I must Move to the vehicular enhancement of your capabilities and promptly storm out of the room determined to go directly to his favorite vehicle. Uh, and I what? clearly, like, begin brandishing my wand of fixing-unfixing uh, with the intent to just whap his car with it <laughs> manically until I get a desired result. What? What is your this desired makes no result? Sense. This makes no sense. Uh, it... Why does it make sense? It's the perfect plan. Darby going into frenzy is really gonna <laughs> to get yeah, him out of the room so I can take a bed. Bl- just to get my bed, you're gonna die for this? Like this is wild. <laughs> you could just ask. Word it. He's I'm about a dead to ask. man. You could just ask. 
Uh, I'm already out of the room. I'm already en route to his car. Uh, Maybe Thurka is there right now. Does Darby <laughs> even know that you are going to his car? Oh, I've, I've declared yeah, he, it loudly. It. I am, I am okay, narrating my own fav- actions okay. all the way out the door. Uh, okay, so Darby, which one is the favorite? Darby is way faster than you. Um, <laughs> and so he just he, he blocks you. He prevents you from doing this. He's like, what? Why are you fucking with me, man? Hey, just what is up? What is your deal right now? You smeared tomato shit all over my door, and now you're about to fuck my car up? Like, what is your major malfunction? Hey, I, with- Darby, it seems like I've, I'm walking in on the middle of something, but I just wanted to know real quick. Uh, can I borrow your bed? What? You need to sleep in it? Yes, it needs to be slept in. How long are you going to keep it for? A while? <laughs> now, I prefer to keep I just got it back, so, you know, no 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 thanks. Can I get the top bunk? Is it a bunk bed? I've always imagined, I always imagined it, imagined it, as, it a as a bunk bed, bed too. Um, no, I no, no, thought no. of it as a bunk bed. In fact, I think I thought a, we were all in bunk beds. In a previous scene, I think that uh, there was a description of Augustine and Darby both sleeping in the same room in beds next to each other. Oh, so they hadn't next stacked them on top to... of each other yet. Not yet. Now there's so much more room. <laughs> there's hope for activities. Yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. So. Darby, it, it. I will be honest. We we need a casket for Onion Jack's body. What? And we thought that since I mean, when you were, you know, when you were, I, I don't want to say it. Dead, dead. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. I was dead for I a bit gave, there. Yeah. I gave your bed to jack and it was his favorite thing so really if you think about it it's like you're taking his bed without asking and i'm doing the nice thing here by asking you i'm appealing to your sense of your great sense of kindness you like to help others you've got a generous giving spirit I'm not here to Jedi mind trick this situation. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna <laughs> let you roll for this. Uh, Darby, Darby is confused, but uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna let fate decide how it comes down. Just standard, standard difficulty one, one dice about whether Darby's gonna buy this or not. Archibald oh, can die. also pop uh, awe, the first level of presence, to make Darby feel. Uh, more receptive to what he's being told. I would definitely like to do that. And am I rolling with a given skill or anything? Yeah, that will be uh, charisma plus performance for you. That will be four dice. Uh, difficulty okay. seven. To to successfully invoke awe? Yeah. Which you would just have to role play. Oh, oof. That's Zero no, successes. no successes. Not a botch. No, that's a botch. That is a botch. That Ooh. is a botch. The result of a botch, I think, that's is that uh, you are immune to... I take to... three points of aggravated damage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say it, and then just immediately Whoa. blood starts... You cringe. My, you my... cringe so hard. That blood... <laughs> like you... It looks like you just got hit with a blood water balloon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, um, <laughs> this roll would be uh, manipulation plus a talent. It could be leadership. It could be intimidation, though that doesn't sound like what you're doing. Uh, empathy also makes sense for what you're doing. This is rank manipulation. If he rolls anything other than manipulation, he's trying to horn swaggle and confuse. Poor sweet okay, Darby. I'll, okay, I'll, I, I thought that that 
<laughs> oh, that was just to do awe. I'm still rolling. Yeah, awe would have okay. just had a, a role-playing effect. But this, uh, if Darby submits to this, uh, this social challenge, I suggest manipulation plus empathy. Difficulty equal to Darby's willpower, which is seven, I believe. Yes. Okay, so that's 5d10. Yeah, I think it's more empathy than leadership there, so... I'm appealing to his good nature. I see one success, which would mean that Darby is barely receptive to this argument. And Darby is just staring at at you. Just like... (laughs) It's almost like you can see the hamster wheel spinning and he's just like trying to understand what you're asking him to do. And then I think... Go ahead. I'm kind of like leaning in the door frame and then suddenly realize that I ha- there is tomato everywhere and it's on me. Yeah. And I say, oh, <laughs> oh, Darby, what happened here? You know what? I'm going to help you clean that up just as soon as we uh, get this funeral. <laughs> and that, that, does, all, that does help. This all. But I think uh, I think Darby looks and sees some uh, some sign of your office, and, and and ultimately his blind trust and authority is what <laughs> what puts him over the line, and he's just like, <laughs> I mean, ah. Is someone going to get me, like, a new one? Or I mean, it's oh, clear of, that of you've, course. like, convinced him. Of course, we're going to the bed store first thing tomorrow night. That, uh, well, all right. Ah, oh, shit. No. And then he and, ate his... Go ahead. And Darby, Darby, tonight, you can sleep in my bed. Um, okay. Or today, uh, you could sleep in my bed. Okay, I won't be chief. there. I'll be having a sad tearful vigil all right well first i got a private chamber goal to crack and he turns around and is is re-engaged uh with augustine what was that you were saying about my car i don't believe augustine made it to his no he he was saying something he was out of the room before arch came in but before we roll for frenzy just wanted to clarify that With a tomato-encrusted hand, caress Darby's face. My good man, all I do is for you. And your empowerment. After such a feat of demonstrable strength this evening, I wish to only grant you further abilities. Uh, Trying to finagle my way out of getting my ass beat. What? Let me translate. What Augustine is saying is that he loves the tongue stuff you do. I've heard that he loves before. It when you do tongue stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, boys, let's grab this bed. What now? Would you like to keep the mattress and the pillows and things, or do you want to get or Darby tomorrow when we go shopping? Do you want to get a brand new set too? Yeah, I would, like I want a new set. Obviously, like I don't know. I mean, okay. Well, let's take these out with us, and we'll get guys. you. Uh, you know what? You'll go, we're going to get a thread count that you you won't even be able to count that high. You, you didn't even know it went that. Numbers went up that much. Guys, it could be a race car bed. Oh, oh fuck yeah. That would be sweet. <laughs> Convert the Aston Martin. Just scoop it out. We can take it to the scoop Nuka Tech guys. Out. They can do this for us. And they can just insert mattress inside. And then we, we could make it so it's mechanically functional, so we can still drive it around while we're just laying down. Like Green a recu- like the recumbent bicycle of luxury cars. Wow. <laughs> a new, a new character goal. <laughs> Excavo, if you don't make this remote control vehicle capable <laughs> so we can send him on sleep driving excavations, uh, I will be severely uh... pissed off. <laughs> He, while wearing his nightcap and holding his his candle with a big drippy wax thing. Do you drive with the Android Auto? 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, absent. Okay. Yeah, so ultimately, I think Derby's very receptive to what he's hearing from from Papa, but ultimately... Papa. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm not sure he's convinced. Like, you've not given me an answer about why. So you're trying to make me stronger. You're trying to give me like wizard powers. What? You, you, like, use small words when you're talking to me, my guy. Tell me what you're trying to do, because it sounds to me like you're trying to ruin my bedroom. And now point your little fuck up stick at my car, and I'm not <laughs> interested. <laughs> They are but cryptic rituals of enhancement, my good man. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't fucking check, my guy. That does not cut it. I'm under- Okay, I hear the cryptic rituals line. I'm like, okay, something's going on over here. <laughs> uh, like, Jasper um, walks in on this and asks, Hello. Hey, uh, could you fellows use uh, any help with anything? I-, I see you're trying to move a bed. Yeah, go ahead and grab a post there, Jasper. And Darby just, like, stares at him and, like, waves him by, like, stay out of this. Like, this hostile energy, um, but, like, (laughs) all focused on Augustine. Like, dude, don't fucking get in my way right now. Now, Darby... My good man, were, were you to wish to remain the same as you were, I'd be happy to neglect... The enhancement of your vehicular capabilities. Uh, now, what? Darby, I I know you're a little upset right now, but remember, things could be worse. This man over here, Jasper Boggs, lost all his best friends today, and they were prospectors, known for their loyalty. I don't even know how such a thing could ever happen. This dude probably fucking sucks, just like his dead-ass brother. Hold on. Are, are we aware of this, like, penny trick Jasper that just Augustine begins does? weeping. He, he half collapses onto the bed and just seems, seems to be agreeing with you. Uh, and no, there's now, no Darby, reason... Now, Darby, he was going would, to help me no. carry this, so we have but no now idea. that he's... Okay. <laughs> now that Jasper is crying on the bed, you're going to have to grab the other end of it, so hurry up, let's go. You can settle your... Little scuffle with Augustine after we get this funeral done. We are on a tight schedule here, people. You're going to make me carry my own bed? Come on, man. This is... God damn it. Okay, Augustine, can you please grab it? (laughs) Invariably! And gleefully with tomato-covered hands, grab a pole and assist. So Jasper is right there helping you with it and, uh, like, assisting you. I just assumed he was, like, getting palin palanquined around uh gotcha is that what that's called i think that's how you're supposed to say it uh anyway that like, sounds right carried around in a very particular manner on a bed the throne of sadness escavo escavo can you bring the glitter da- outside it's in it's on my craft table <laughs> Now you're asking me to do a thing that I wouldn't otherwise be doing. Mm. Mm. Fuck. Maybe. Please. <sighs> so in the okay. silence. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Jasper cuts in. You can in. just throw it to me out the window. Oh, okay. Jasper had the sun not. Is coming up. <laughs> Jasper had not met Darby before. Darby wasn't present at uh, the the prospector camp. But he looks just like Jack, right? Like I, I, th- I thought it was established that he looked exactly like his brother. No, there's like a resemblance, but they're no. not they're not twins or anything. Oh, and I think Darby was present when you went through the prospector camp, spoke with Jasper briefly. And went into the cave and found mm-hmm. Giant Bat John Tenniel. But I believe that was Darby Darby, not uh, Thurgood Darby. So yeah. for Jasper, Jasper just overheard that there's this person he's never met. And this is apparently that person's bed who is protesting. 
And he turns to you, Darby, and says, Oh, hi, friend. My name's Jasper Boggs, and I I believe this bed uh, was planned for uh, to, to be part of the burial of, of my brother Jack. Is this... Uh, how do you feel about this, friend? Yeah, I don't love it, Chief, but I gotta tell you, uh, I got I got asked real nice about it, and your dumb brother's dead, so I guess, I guess you can have it. I'm getting a new bed. <laughs> it's gonna have sheets and, and a high count or something. Anyway, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Well, it sounds like a good move for you, and if it makes any difference, I think Jack would have really appreciated the gesture. Ah, don't ruin it. (laughs) So as you are carting the bed out, uh, Jasper says, You know, I went by Jack's alley to pick up some of his belongings to bury with him. I thought that would be nice. Plus, I I don't want them to just be left in the alley to, I don't know, be thrown away or whatever. But... You see, a rather queer thing happened. When I got there, uh, I saw the people. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bless. In character, Ooh. that happened, yes. Ooh, couldn't keep it straight. When I got there, I saw the people who heard about Jack's passing have been visiting Onion Alley to pay their respects and leave onion bulbs and onion flowers there in his memory. I thought it was awful sweet, but I went into the alley, and where Jack would usually lay his head at night, well, a surly young fellow was sleeping in Jack's bedding. He looked like he was wearing, uh, like, nice college boy clothes, but he was awful dirty and crying, (laughs) and he was eating some of those onions raw. I asked him if he... No! Yeah, I asked him if he knew Jack and wanted to come to the burial, because... I'm guessing he was mourning the the passing of my brother, but I think he misunderstood me. He called me a chuggy idiot who should get bent up a rope and said that his name wasn't Jack. I think he just misheard me. I I don't remember what he said his name was, but it was something weird. Anyway, it looks like he just lives there now in that alley, and so I just left all of Jack's things where they were in the hopes that they would help this poor soul. Uh, what the fuck what the fuck (laughs) it's refreshing to know that a new jack has been breathed into this world i was Uh just thinking that from excavo's last thing where in her psychotic (laughs) hallucination she asked the question can onion jack be brought back and (laughs) they nodded yes the spirit (laughs) literally forced jack's soul into clark (laughs) <laughs> Who might do it willingly after what I did to him? I don't know. Oh, Clark. Yeah, that's oh, Clark. Um, no. Yeah, it's so Clark. Let me, oh, okay. Let me ask you this: Do we also hate Chance the person the that gets the coin, or no? I can't. I can't remember. An, no, it doesn't have an effect on vampires. Only humans. Okay, correct. I mean, I hate this guy because he looks like Onion Jack. There's a resemblance. All right, are we ready to start the burial? Let's get this over with. Jasper nods. Okay, now now Jasper, get out of the bed so we can put your brother in. He hops out. Okay, now Jack, I'm going to tuck you in one last time here. Give so, him a little forehead kiss. So <laughs> Jack is still in the bed of the pickup truck and seeing the Wait, bed... we already had a bed the whole time? <sighs> you want to bury a pickup truck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I dig a bigger hole. So, um, so the so Darby's bed is is out there and placed near the hole. Uh, Jasper gets in the pickup truck, and before he gets in, he says, uh, "Like I'll pull this around, and I, I, I hope that this will be the appropriate way to put his his spirit at rest, and uh, I'll finally right the wrong of what was perhaps a an awkward and an inappropriate funeral that we had the other night." And he gets into his, his pickup truck and he does, and he drives it uh, a little ways like up the, the driveway. So he's positioned so that like the bed is pointed at you and pointed at Darby's bed. And then he puts it in no. reverse and he floors no. it no. heading right toward you really fast. 
And then you hear him uh, hit the brake, hit the emergency brake, and Jack's bed slides out of the bed of the pickup truck, landing gently on Darby's bed. Still wrapped in a sheet. <laughs> of course. Okay, now that's I, I Jack's bed it. now. I mean, Darby's getting a brand new bed, and it's going to be awesome. So that's that's Jack's bed at this point. Darby will get the big boy bed. And Jasper's like, uh, "How was my that aim?" Was carpet. <laughs> you know, honestly, Jasper, those it's really impressive. He gets out. Uh, how is there? Any means through which Augustine could perceive whether or not Jasper is a particularly religious man? You don't see any obvious, like, religious jewelry or anything like that? He is him. wearing a large cross and carries a big Bible everywhere he goes. He has a weird crown thorn. A thorn crown. <laughs> <laughs> crown thorn. You crown don't see thorn. any obvious signs crown of thorns. <laughs> okay, cool. Why? <laughs> All right, everyone. I have okay. an idea. I think I'm going to abort my idea. Um, it's going to be blasphemous. That's actually wasn't it? illegal now. Yeah, you can't do that. <sighs> For fear of breaching the masquerade, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to abort. Mm-hmm. Stop! <laughs> you don't have to say it like that. <laughs> All right, can we? Would you all like to help me lower? I'm upstairs. My I already threw down the glitter. I was about to say, I, Dar- Darby's like, I'm good. And he's like, uh, back to his room, sizing up where his new I bed didn't even is check if Augustine, would you I like to. I the glitter out the window. Augustine, you were Jack's <laughs> second best friend. Would you like to help me lower him in? Indubitably, my good man. Thank you so uh, much. <laughs> and now, Jack. I don't have the words to express saying goodbye to you now. So I'll have to do it with a song. Yes! (laughs) (laughs) You put the boom boom into my heart. You set my soul sky high (laughs) when your loving starts a jitterbug into my brain. It goes bang, bang, bang till my feet do the same. Wake me up before you go, go. Don't leave me hanging on like a yo-yo. Everybody, wake me up before you go, Darby's crying and singing. I don't want to miss it when you hit that high. Wake me up. Before you go, etc., etc., and take <laughs> me dancing tonight. I'll always love you, Jack. Okay, and then we will. Augustine and Archibald, please give me, uh, let's say, a dexterity plus athletics roll. Is that does that sound right for yeah, like positioning right. it? Uh, difficulty eight. So we know how Blake can sing. Would Archibald have a similar voice? Would would it was it just like Oof, ah, right. or was it like botch. oh, this is good? We got, got for that. we got a zero and a botch. <laughs> oh no! <gasps> no. <laughs> okay. Where's the slow version of Jungle Bridges? <gasps> oh. So uh, <laughs> we drop him real bad. So. <laughs> Un- oh, unbelievable. Oh my god, no. Oh so. no, man. <laughs> nice. I want to see here how the botch plays out. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> here we go. So, Did you ever think in all your years of playing this game? So I have a very specific <laughs> idea of how this might play out, but I'm wondering, Steve, if... You might also have an idea, and if you would like 
to narrate the results of botching the burial <laughs> of Onion Jack. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> oh, no. Um, so just like the prospect, even, even though uh, Archibald is very strong, just like the prospect of lowering the body himself, it's just like sort of awkward. And he can't can't really get a good grip. And so he invites Augustine to, to, to hold it with him. And just the center of gravity at the center of the body, like, folds him in half. So he just, like, he just, like, bends in half, like, at the waist, like a normal human being. Wait, the like, bed just folds? Like, yeah, yeah, the whole thing. No, uh, shit, I forgot they were holding the bed. That's that's less fun for me. Um, I it. mean, it could just... Might I suggest just an idea? Just on him like an yeah. accordion? Yeah, that, <laughs> like that's, a that's Murphy where... bed and, like... <laughs> <laughs> just the outcome, the outcome that I wanted, Grant, like an is, alligator's mouth. I wanted them to both fall head first on top of him into the into the grave, the open grave. I will take that idea. I will roll it into what my idea was. So you have uh, you have a hole and you have a a bed, the same roughly the same shape as the hole. And the idea was you would. In your minds, you would get the bed directly over the hole and then lower it straight down, like what they do with coffins. Um, you found that it was a bit awkward to get the whole bed off of the ground, especially with Augustine being the one moving half of it, and Augustine doesn't have potence. Um, so what actually happens is it's kind of being dragged along the ground, and once it gets a little over halfway over the hole, it just tips into the hole and falls entirely upside down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Throwing Jack to the bottom of the hole with an upside down bed on top of him. And in the attempt to grab it and keep it from flipping, both of you fall head first in on top of the bed. And you yes. mentioned that there were posts to the bed. In my mm. imagination, two people jumping on the underside of it, landing on the underside of it, when it's uh, upside down, would just drive those posts into the ground, kind of pinning Jack's body in place <laughs> and making the bed very difficult, if not impossible, to extract because you, you oh, yeah. planted the bed with like four stakes at the bottom of this hole. Now, you see, you've actually helped us out because now it's actually m- functions more as a casket. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> So this is it a, looks more this is spectacular fine. from above. I'm, Task I'm failed looking successful. out the window at this uh, this <laughs> fiasco. Okay, Jasper, uh, <laughs> just start just start laying the. Just, there's a shovel there. Just start sprinkling the dirt in. I <laughs> I don't want to go on without it. I don't know what I can do without my sweet Jack, and, but also. Uh, sprinkle in the glitter a little bit as you go. I think it'll look cool. Jasper gets out of the pickup truck and looks into the hole, really confused, and is like half listening to you. And then he points into the hole and looks at you and says, Did you mean to do that? (laughs) <laughs> yeah this is uh oh, oh this is how we do it in the big city where oh. i'm from well no wonder i screwed it up yeah i'm from dayton ohio <laughs> yes the big city oh wow i've heard of that place the coffee they have a they have a t- Taxi, a taxi, sir, a taxi. Just on taxi. You've seen a taxi. <laughs> let, and let me tell you, Jasper, it's wild. I couldn't stand that hustle and bustle. That's why I had to move out here to get a taste of real America. Well, man, as as I said earlier, canonically, I used to live in Manhattan, but I still get impressed with Dayton. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I, my my favorite idea is the fact that he lived in Manhattan and never saw a taxi. <laughs> He only took the subway. He never (laughs) went to the surface. That's right. People would always rush me into my private cars so fast, you know, because of the threat of assassins. I never got a chance to see what, like, commoners were riding in. Commoners. So Jasper starts, like, you know, uh, like, taking the big pile of dirt and putting it on top of the bed that's making a very... Very damning, like hollow thump sound every time a, a, a oh, Gus, water. So you don't lands. have to stay here with me and get buried if you don't want. Though I would appreciate the man. solidarity for once. Were this how you wish to process your internal machinations, so be it. I will come retrieve you on the morrow after you've had a good night's sleep. Okay, thank Mr. You. Boggs! Did you happen to bring any of those onions from your brother's former domicile? Oh, no, they appear to be uh, the sustenance for the, um, whatever that that young man, I wanted to say his name was like Clamp or Clonk. Um, but no, I, I couldn't bear to take any of those onions from him that he, he appeared to be subsisting on. Damnable imbecile, no wonder your comrades abandoned you. Uh, he and collapses. He just starts weeping openly again. I uh, I claw my way out of the hole and just kind of like half-heartedly produce some seeds from my pocket and dispassionately toss them into the grave where I wish uh, onions had gone. Um, I'll come back for you on the morrow, good sir. I, I start crawl. I start crawling out and I say, "Oh shoot! I forgot to get the card things from Abram." <laughs> is there a scoop of dirt hitting you in the face as you try yeah. to <laughs> of course. Go it's like never mind I still have things to do I have so much to live for I have one errand <laughs> to do uh, you do get the impression that you could just stop by Nukertech anytime and they'll have cards ready for you guys fantastic okay we finish up this burial and go on to bed yep and you get the impression Jasper in his grief is just going to spend all night Filling in the hole until he's done, and then he's going to leave. All right, does anyone else do anything else before they um, go to bed? I think Darby hopped up on meth blood, uh, sends a, like a drunk text to Jade. Oh, no. What does it say? It, it, just a horrible text speak, because he thinks that's like how the youths talk to each other but he's just like thinking about you bb uh hope (laughs) eggplant emoji no no not not quite that (laughs) not quite that but (laughs) it's just inartful but the (laughs) the message is uh you know i hope you're doing good just a pretty benign but he had been trying to give her space and i think he finally breaks down and sends her a text Okay. Uh, and you do not get a reply tonight. Darby cries blood all the way to sleep. <laughs> so you all go to bed and uh, excavo. As usual, every time you go to sleep, you end up in this black void where uh, you were walking along a path made of mirror shards and uh, you see that they go up a little hill and at the top of the hill there is the floating full-length mirror with an ornate frame with question marks in it and there is your mute reflection waiting for you in the frame and it can apparently answer any yes or no question you ask it. Of course, subject to my ability to actually give a yes or no question, or answer to your question. I think Excavo would be um, thinking about the chess game coming up on Saturday. Will Famine open E4? (laughs) 
<laughs> will it be the the what opening will they will they use the queen's gambit? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ooh, 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 oh, um, oh, about uh? the the houses. Mm. I want to ask because you said there were like there was something about like the five. Okay, so I, I guess I just want to ask, like, all this information I found, mm-hmm. is it all connected? Now, you know that you collected a lot of information, and some of it, just eyeballing yeah. it, seems unlikely to have anything to do with this. So if you were to ask... Or, or, like, or like, is my hunch correct or something, like, to verify that this is all what coming is, together? What is your hunch, specifically? I mean, this is going to... I assume... If it's not going to lead us to anything else, it might lead us to one of the horsemen? Want to get back to me on it? Yeah, think about it. There's so, a lot of info here. Augustine, your turn. Always a delight, my good man. So, <laughs> so you go to sleep, and uh, you spent a while... Wait, did you help? I forget. Did did you just help Archibald uh, digging the hole? No, I helped him put stuff in the hole uh, and spent time harassing Darby, trying to distract him from his bed. This man loves to fill holes. It's true. It's true. So in your dream, you get castigated by your prince for not assisting him with digging the hole. Uh, for leaving him to do it largely on his own. Yeah, it was just him, and at the very end, uh, Jasper helped. Um, and you are ordered to go into that hole and to, to do the rest of the digging. And in your dream, your mind is kind of wandering, but what you're doing is you're digging, throwing dirt out, digging, digging. And before you realize it, you look around, and you've dug... Uh, like a 12, 15, 20 foot deep hole. Uh, who knows how you got the dirt out of it, but you are at the bottom of a grave that's just hopelessly deep. And uh, the walls feel pretty slick and it's it's unclear to you how you are going to get out of it. So, of course, you call for assistance. Uh, go ahead and do that, please. Bully! I seem to have found myself at the bottom of a well. Anybody, anybody surface dwelling? Mm? Mm? You see one figure kind of poke his head out at the at surface level and look down. And it is Darby who has just returned from investigating his car, which in that weird dream sense you just remembered a thing that had happened that wasn't actually part of the dream. You just remember that you really fucked up his car. You basically turned it inside out on a whim because you thought it would advance one of your agendas. And Darby has just discovered this and has also just discovered you in the hole. And uh, Steve, would you like to uh, take over the rest of the narration of this scene? Yeah, um, and (laughs) I think probably the most alarming thing out of this is the silence. Um, Darby (laughs) isn't talking shit. He's not yelling. He's not swearing. He's just angry. And you see, like, a, a terrifying rictus of just rage on his face um and then you notice that he he's in frenzy so there will be no talking him out of whatever is about to happen it's just like gonna happen um and darby like full-on cannonballs his way (laughs) into the hole um and he comes right at your face like a like a snarling wildebeest just 
right at you. Um, and then just immediately starts pummeling you. And you can feel it. Each hit so hard, like unfathomably hard. Like he's not just his regular inhuman strong, but juiced up somehow on rage. And, and yeah. then the tongue comes out. And it is bigger and faster than you remember. And it is just fucking you up. Just stabbing you. Uh, and each time you feel it, like it's almost like one eighth of your life force drains away. Uh, and as everything's going black, Darby just looks down and says, That was my bed, you motherfucker. <laughs> and that's the last thing that's the last thing you hear before you wake up. I like to think that somewhere in there I tried to choke out the words The ritual was a success. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, okay. So I, I dream died. I dream murdered. Darby tongue, tongue you to death. Tongue murder. Not in the way that you like it. In the way that he likes it. Um, a tongue lashing. So for Augustine, that is a willpower roll difficulty seven. That is six dice for you. Is there a dice penalty for his damage level? You know... Uh, yeah, wound penalty, actually, that would apply, so five dice. Alright, five dice, difficulty seven. I don't... Roll. I will... Okay. Um, oh, you got, got one. one success. Just barely avoided being traumatized by the nightmare of being Darby murdered. Um, I think you die in most of your nightmares, right? You got... Crushed to death on stage, you got dragged out into the sun by a revenant and Darby, and I think the bear cub killed you in one of them. Um, yeah, yeah, honestly, at this point, I should have like a I should stream a tier list of all the dream murders I've been, I've experienced. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say this one's a solid B tier. This is a B tier dream murder. <laughs> It. It's pretty good. It's I, yeah, I was put right on the spot, so I'm, a B out of my ass is uh, I will I will the take that. Anytime. Phenomenal improvisation, to be sure. All right, so it is now um, the sun has just set in the evening of Friday, May first. It is um, still May Day. Um, it is the tail end. Of May Day, so Archibald's uh, socialist celebration can continue. Wait, Thank God, we, aren't we already asleep? Oh, no, we uh, just woke up the next day. Just woke up. Oh, new day. Oh, but it's like night, so it, it's still technically okay. Dates and how they work. Right on. Uh, well, first thing I want to take care of is it. It's how many days until chess? It is tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow. Okay. Cool. I want to go pick up those things from Nuker Tech. Uh, you swing by Nuker Tech. It's pretty early in the evening. Uh, lights are still on. They're still doing their usual thing. You hear the sounds of things being manufactured and people clickety clacking on keyboards. And uh, uh, Abraham Branson spots you and says, Oh, um,. Uh, Mister, I forgot our our A team analogy. Were you uh, Hannibal? Uh, no, uh, B A. I think you were. Whatever. Uh, I got your cards for you. These uh, these these M K T access cards. I remember there were four of you, so I, I whipped up I whipped up five just in case uh, you guys have uh, any other friend you want to give one to, or maybe a uh, uh, who was the Charlie's Angels guy? Was he uh, was it Bosley? That Bosley is right. Yeah, it is. Bosley. It is Bosley. I don't. I don't know how your uh, your your team of uh, of secret agents or whatever. I don't know how you operate, but I, if you have a handler, he's welcome to want. You know, it's your. You can give it to, to whoever well, you want. I That's not necessarily a, a. You could have a female handler too. I, I I didn't mean to be presumptuous. I don't even know if you have a handler. Uh, and then he hands you 
a stack of these like right. plain white. I did have a best friend, but he's dead. I buried him last night. Oh my god! Uh, I'm so sorry you. to hear that. Are these collectible? I am not sure what you mean. I mean, you have just collected I them, just, so. Well, they're cards, and you just seem like the oh. type who would be into that kind of thing. So I wasn't sure if this was one of those uh, things. Well, each of them is uh, individual. They each have their own uh, IDs. Normally, uh, we would issue them uh, to, like, we would tie someone's identity to each card. So if there's some sort of, like, problem in the system, it would help us debug. We know that, like, oh, uh, like, Jeff went in, and then everything broke down. Let's ask Jeff what happened. Um, but because I don't know any of your identities and I can't plug them in, uh, all of these are uh, anonymous, but also uh, they have unique IDs to them. I, I don't know if this is helpful information, but this is that that's how they work. Great. Thank you very much. Well, what are you doing like this this week? Do you want to like hang out? Oh wow! Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I don't get a lot of opportunities to to get out of the the lab Great. here. I'm, I'm kind of taking applications right now for a best friend, so I'm just uh, trying to just uh, you know kind of review applicant. That seems impersonal. Uh, well, that seems like that best to... friend seems like a lot of pressure. Um, I mean, I I don't uh, have a lot of. Uh, uh, success with with those sorts of things. People uh, find my no my voice to be grating, and uh, and uh, it it uh, kind of wears on them after a while. I I don't hear it myself, but I've I've heard that from people. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want to do something, I'm sure I could I could I find. I mean, uh, also just come on by Club Wonderland any any time. Uh, that's my bar. That's your. Oh, that's like your regular hangout spot? Yeah, you could say that. What it what is what are you not saying? Because people when people <laughs> say you can say that, they usually mean there's something else that they're not saying. And I don't I, I don't pick up on I said uh, it's my bar. Social cues. Like, do you own the bar? Yes. Yeah, yes. You could say that. That is crazy. <laughs> I've I've heard people talk you about could say the bar. Once for country. Um, crazy. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I've been curious about. Um, I've I've heard of the place. I, I haven't been in, but I um I'm always interested in in seeing uh, like tours of places that that put on like big shows. I'm curious about how the wiring works for all the the AV stuff. Um, I I don't mean to like pressure you to give me a, a tour but uh, yeah absolutely I'd, I'd love to to do that um um when do you want to do this and of course if you ever feel the need to practice your second amendment's rights just come on down to pal's guns that's my uh, my gun store you own a gun store too uh, yeah that is do you own anything else in town i've been trying to collectivize a lot of it but we'll talk about that on our date hangout thing. I mean, do you, hangout. I do mean, you want me to, to bring um, Bartleby and Candace too? Uh, that would be great. Oh, you do? Okay. I wasn't, yeah. I didn't know the etiquette of this. I, I, don't, I don't. We can do like a group cool hangout. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have a, a company outing to, to, to accompany you out. At Club Wonderland. Uh, what, That's what, the better of the two companies to have the outing at. Yeah, which, um, uh, what what day were you thinking of for doing this? Like tonight or uh, tomorrow? What, what day is it right now? Tomorrow what is, day of the week is it right now? It's, well, it's Friday right now. Tomorrow would be Saturday. and That's a traditional let's hangout kind of day. Do, Let's do tomorrow. I can squeeze you in. I'm meeting somebody for a quick chess game. But after that, it should be fine. I think I'm meeting them at 7. So come around. Uh, 9. 9 would be good. 9 or 10. Wow. Uh, a 
chess date. Is that at Club Wonderland too? Oh, uh, yes. Wow. Um, and this is a. I, I, sorry if this is an inappropriate uh, question. Um, is this is this a private kind of chess match? Because I I wouldn't mind seeing it myself. Uh, it's the kind of thing that I really want to focus on. You know, give all okay. my yeah. attention to. It's a. I understand. Uh, yeah. Well, I will be there at nine o'clock. And he okay, gets out of his phone and he puts something into his, his Google calendar. Great. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. It'll be good to, you know, get my mind mind off of old Jack there. And I leave with the cards cool. and go to distribute them to my friends. Candace doesn't seem to notice you. Bartleby is in the, uh, the exoskeleton suit moving uh, what looks like a big heavy box. And he, like, raises one hand to, like wave at you with a big robot suit and the <laughs> whole box <laughs> falls and a bunch of tubes come like, spilling out. Hey, it's the internet. <laughs> it's tubes. All right, I guess I go back and give everybody their cards. Yep. And your understanding is each of those cards can be used to open up an MKT access point. Don't we need to retrieve a bed from the bed store? We and- sure do. Whatever we don't own one of those is. yet. Sunset, May 1st, 2020. Uh, it is 8.37 p.m. Uh, you have just enough time to get to the bed store before it closes at 9. But it has to be uh, not Archibald because you're splitting up your errands. It has to be because Archibald doesn't have time to grab the cards and go to a bed store and get back in time, that has to be a split-the-party separate errand. Feeling quite bad about uh, the bed situation vis-a-vis his dream the night before, Mm -hmm. Augustine happily volunteers to retrieve Darby's bed. (laughs) Um, Does Darby wish to join Augustine? So, right? Sure, yeah. To pick out his own bed? Uh, Dar- yeah, Darby seems really excited about this. He's like, yeah, yes, yeah, let's go! It's like, you know what? Something fun and semi-normal is happening. <laughs> I, bed I shopping. <laughs> Vampire the Masquerade. Exactly I, where you'd I, go. I do yeah. have a question from earlier that I think I'm ready to ask. Essentially... I want to ask if um, if the junkyard in Westville was the true start of this plot. And like, by, I understand, like, you know, for many years, people have been making pentagrams and, like, doing all this stuff. But I mean, like, the intention of, like, making these pentagrams in this junkyard, was it, is that the start of what we're seeing now? You are asking if that is... Part of the same thing that happened in Shedtown, and also the first time that that had ever happened. For for the purposes of what's happening, yes. <laughs> like I said, like pentagrams, I understand they've been around forever, but okay. So if the emphasis is that is connected to what's happening in Newcomac, and yeah, th- what happened in the junkyard was the first time that something like that had happened. Confirmation, that's what you're asking? For, like, whoever's doing this, yes. Like, that's that's them doing it for the first time. The reflection uh, lifts its head a little bit and cocks it to the side as if... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as if kind of thinking and then shakes its like, head no. Oh, so it's not related. There were... Two parts of the assumption that you were asking if it was true or not. So at least okay. one of those parts was false. Well, so my question's too complex. Can I spoil it down? <laughs> you, yeah. You could ask. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, next time, is the next opportunity you get okay. to ask a, yeah. a question. Well, shit. Okay, I didn't realize it was... I didn't realize my question had so many parts to it as I was asking it. Okay. 
um there will be uh more opportunities so yeah, i feel like i just wasted that okay uh i mean that is still information you got information and that could maybe be helpful are you joining augustine and darby to yeah. the bed store so yes. a- as you guys <laughs> as you guys walk in it is about uh like 15 minutes till close and uh, it's one of those stores where you can't just go in and casually walk around and people will leave you around, leave you alone. Uh, the moment you walk in, there is an employee that walks up directly to you with aggressive eye contact and is like, hey, you here to pick something up? Or are you just looking or is there anything we could help you find? Alternating like eye contact with all three of you to see who would speak first. My yeah. good man, we are in search of betting the likes of which this good gentleman has never understood to be existentially possible. We're looking for sheets of the finest quality, numbers of which he cannot ro- obtain with his brain space. Are you in possession of such articles? Beds? Yeah. <laughs> Lead me, good <laughs> sir. <laughs> What uh, what are you looking for? Like, what size? We got twin, full, queen, king, California king. We got water beds. We got uh, those, like, memory foam kinds. Uh, we've got beds for kids. Oh, you said it was for this gentleman here? Yes. Is this your father, by Darby, the way? Darby, what, what are you looking for? Go on about the beds for kids. Oh well, beds for kids. We we have uh, we have bunk beds. Uh, we have this one fun fun bunk bed that has a. Uh, it's got a little curly slide going from the top one. We thought that was clever. We of course have like uh, beds. How big's the slide? Darby looks at ah, not big enough. All right, what else you got? <laughs> uh, we have beds shaped like various vehicles. We got we got the Batmobile. Go here. on. We got a. Uh, Police car. Uh, we got a bigger one. Darby um, literally spits on the guy when he says that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, not that one. <laughs> I I apologize for him. Uh, he does not get out very much. So uh, he, the guy's putting on his salesman face. He's he's trying not to like. He he lets it slide. It's like. <laughs> Okay, uh, we got we got a fire truck down there. Uh, how old? Uh, how old's your kid? He just casually wipes the blood spit off his face, just like Darby. Incredible. Darby looks at the bed and then looks at the guy and is like trying to decide what an appropriate age is for someone who would use this bed. And he's just like less than one. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Oh, well, like, if you are looking for, a, I, it sounds like you're going to need more of a crib with like some raised sides. So the, the no, baby no, work. this one, this is the one right here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> so I really want this guy to think I'm buying it for an infant. <laughs> okay. Well, I suppose yeah, baby's going to grow into this. Uh, this fire truck bed or what have you. Uh, <laughs> this fire is, of course, the, the frame. And we could put uh, whatever kind of mattress that you want that's going to be uh, the, uh, twin-sized. Um, so, yeah, if this if, if your mind's made up, uh, yeah, we've got uh, all these, these vehicle beds for children. We could throw in a normal... Uh, like spring style mattress with a box spring. We got memory foam. Uh, it could even be a water bed if, if you think your infant might prefer such a thing to sleep on. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my child loves water beds, actually, now that you mention. <laughs> oh, well. If it, if it's familiar to the little critter, then uh, then all the better. So so which which style of vehicle bed uh, do you think you're going to pick up tonight? What what are the options? It was uh, fire truck and police. That one uh, was obviously not going to work. Batmobile and um, a uh, a there's a pickup truck and. How many other, uh... 
No, so Darby goes and stands <laughs> between <laughs> the Batmobile and the pickup truck, and he just looks torn, you know, completely unable to commit either way. And he looks back to Augustine with like a look of like like panic, like half panic, <laughs> half hope, you know, because he knows he knows Augustine is like really rich and and. <laughs> He's hoping, he hoping upon hope that there might be room in his heart for for both. But, you know, he wants Augustine to come to this conclusion on his own. So he's like, I just, oh, man, I just don't know. Boy, I love them both so much. They both fill half of the hole in my heart. I, got. I elbow Augustine. I'm like, I, I, I think... I think he's saying he wants both. I'm well, how can I out, choose? I'm going to point out something to Darby. It occurs to him, since he is someone who's worked on like cars. He's half. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, yep. absolutely. Ex- exactly ahead. that. Yeah. Yeah, but so you need the material. It occurs to you that the thing that makes it a pickup truck is the back half, and the thing that makes it a Batmobile yeah. is mostly the just front. the front half. So you can make a yes. Batmo pickup truck. <laughs> A Batmo Camino. <laughs> the Batman F one fifty. So um, Darby's just like, can, can I? Can I? Pl- can I please? Like a little kid trying to convince their parent to buy him some candy. <laughs> uh, Augustine still hasn't washed his hands since his antics the night prior. So I've got tomato crust on my hands. Why, why is it starting What does with your this? bed look like? Ugh. Uh, <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> who promptly, like, leans onto the hood of one of them and is like, but can it be raced? Hmm. Lifts it up, makes sure to make unusually high amounts of, like, exploratory hand contact with the bed. <laughs> Ah, okay. Those so, experiments will have to be done at our domicile. We'll take both. You, you've literally never seen Darby as happy as, as he is in this exact moment. He's just like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yes. Where's the sh- what, what? What about the sheets? What, do they have matching set? Do they have, like, Batman sheets? Oh, shit. This right next is to it be- is the Batman sheets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the sets are there. <laughs> Would be funny to have the fight the the truck bed with Batman sheets. And the Batman bed with truck sheets. Why not por, por no los dos? So Darby uh is furiously <laughs> scribbling on a piece of paper, um and, and he hands it discreetly to Augustine and um I will send him a message on Facebook about what it says. And I'll tell Graham. I'll tell Graham too. The salesman is very confused because he's never Just seen. Me, who does not know? He's never seen an elderly man look <laughs> that excited about a Batmobile bed, nor a truck bed. Um, and Darby's clearly acting like it is a very personal win for him that this much younger man is buying this child's bed. <laughs> for him the salesman does not know what to make of it so he's kind of like staring in the middle distance as he's like i'll get you your i'll get you your paperwork right now this this was quick and he goes off and you see him like getting some stuff to sign into a a clipboard and he comes back and he goes up to augustine like all right uh we have multiple financing options uh you could just make uh like monthly payments uh, we do recommend that you throw in the mattress protector and all these bells and whistles. And uh, the total uh, for the two beds is uh, looks like it's uh, it's, it's just a just a hair over thirty eight hundred dollars. How how are you doing today? And and how much is that in seeds? <laughs> what <laughs> I elbow it like. <clears throat> I can't, but alas, I kid. That's that's affordable. By God, how many beds do you have in this building? Oh, in this building, oh, we usually fluctuate between like two hundred and, and three hundred in our inventory. 
get uh, the my, bad can, store. Can, can I make a, my, a minute adjustment <laughs> to this paperwork? Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, we have all sorts of financing options Uh-oh. for you, however you need to make these uh, payments. You're, you're already halfway there. You're speaking my language. I'll take all of them. <laughs> I knew it. You mean both of them? No, all of them. <laughs> Are you trying to buy these stores? All of, all of the two beds all, that you selected? All, all, no, all of the beds. All of the beds in, in all of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't understand. I don't think you understood when I'm I con- said all of the bacon in I'm here. confusing because it sounds like... It sounds like you're saying all, all of the beds in the, in the store, all of them, not all of them, <laughs> all of them. Ah. Uh, oh. Okay. Um. All right. Well, that will that will take a substantial amount of time inventorying them and and coming up with a a total. No one's. I don't think this has ever happened. Um, first, th- first time for everything, my good man. So we can, uh, if you don't mind, we can get to work on all that paperwork, uh, and probably by by the after, like tomorrow afternoon, we should have it all ready. Might I ask you why uh, you are buying all of the beds? So, somewhere in my recollection, somebody this evening had mentioned that we don't own a bed store yet, and. I cannot abide by such a notion. In the meantime, we will be taking these two beds. You just call my person when you finish the paper. Now, I, I must be transparent about this. Um, if if you are going to remove all of our inventory, I don't know if we can do financing for that. I think we're going to need at least a down payment, a substantial portion of the payment up front. And this is going to be... Uh, at least, I would imagine, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is this something that you are prepared to do and will wait for a check to clear before we give you the inventory? Because this is all, uh, <laughs> this is unusual. Invariably, my good man, I understand the abnormality that of this experience for you. Please. Uh, cuts him a check for like, yeah, 25k? Uh, to take the two beds. <laughs> okay, well, I mean... we will load these beds in, into your vehicle, and if you come back tomorrow, we'll have, uh, uh, do you need assistance transporting these beds? We can get a few, uh, semi-trailers to... To, to take it uh, really anywhere within the county that you need. Um, we'll have some trucks ready for you to help you with, with transportation and uh, come back tomorrow and uh, the rest of the beds will be ready for you to pick up. Fantastic, my good man. Pleasure doing Hold business on. with you. I take Augustine aside. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the guy, God. the guy collapses. He sits down, like he's he's trying to process it, like he's having a miniature panic attack. Oh, there needs to be an aside here, because like, where are we going to put all these beds? Why are we buying all these beds? That's a tomorrow problem. I mean, I'm not <laughs> there. That's a tomorrow problem. Not no. there. Why don't you just buy the the? Store? That's what I was going to suggest: is to just buy the building, so you don't have to ship the beds anywhere. If you really want all the beds, there you go. Just buy the business. Oh, it wouldn't be the first come... time. Only want the beds. Are you listening? <laughs> put them. Well, where in do the we gun put gun all the beds? Stack them all up outside, one on top of the other. <laughs> Gonna if princess not, in the pee it. <laughs> you guys could, do, we could put the beds in the gun store. It could be like <laughs> Augustine's beds. beds and guns. It's gonna be a new store hybrid, the likes of which New Kamak has never seen. Sleep buy like one, a baby. Buy a bed, get one gun free. Um. Well, the difference in cost between buying all the mattresses and buying the mattress store make any meaningful difference to my seemingly limitless funds? Um, I think buying the store makes more sense because then you wouldn't be, like, buying all the inventory, like, marked up at a profit. 
Well, so yeah. uh, I'm trying to operate within the limits of I have one of my backgrounds is having a metric fuck ton of money, but well, yeah, trying to p- participate within the limitations of the world that Mister Mister Watson has set forth. Uh, <laughs> I also Not feel proper. like it's much like the gun store; it's never going to come up again. So. I mean, might as well just do it. <laughs> that's, that's what you Not think. much time has elapsed. I mean, it, these things <laughs> might take a bit. Yeah. True. So, like, would this have any meaningful impact on my ability to conjure money uh, were I to tr- attempt to follow through with this? Or um, would I have to otherwise uh, use these to facilitate more income? You uh, can definitely leverage these things to produce more income you don't have infinite money and uh if you have recently made a big expenditure like buying a gun store uh and you're trying to follow it up with buying another big store it is going to start to strain your financial abilities uh a bit i'm gonna have to resort to selling tomatoes on the street man (laughs) Would it be much more so than buying all the beds in the building? <laughs> I don't at like retail price. I don't have an answer off the top of my head, but I'm guessing those might be like roughly the the same, same amount of money. Kind of depending on like yeah. real estate prices uh, and location and stuff. You could buy like just the kids' beds, the vehicle beds. I can start race them. selling guns in the beds to the unholy rollers and start a whole underground <laughs> smuggling market of guns in beds. Um, <laughs> that while, might the well dude, while the guy is reeling from the prospect of selling all of the beds, I'm going to just drag the two that we want to the ca- nearest cash register an attempt to check out before he has an idea of what's happening. <laughs> Wait, you're... wait. Unless he's the cashier. Yeah, he's he was ringing Damn. us out. He's he's your yeah, guy. It's the same person. It's a mattress store. I assume there's like usually like one person working. Yeah. You see a second person like behind a desk dealing with some some of the paperwork. Ah. All right. But yeah, Yeah, they're trying to, they're trying to close up. They're trying to get you out the door. They're like, yeah, you can take these two ridiculous child beds, which would be a bit difficult for uh, a full grown adult to comfortably fit in. But this may not matter to Darby. Nope. Not when I'm done with them. All right, so do you take those novelty beds, cram them into the Escalade, um, acknowledge to the staff that you were going to come back tomorrow to buy, to complete your purchase of their entire inventory? Are you sure you want to do this? Well, the thing is, I don't have to come back. I can just be fucking with them and leave. Oh, yeah, no. For for $25,000, yeah, I mean, I think you've... So my question was just, do you, they're asking you if, if you're going to come back tomorrow, do you just acknowledge, do you, you claim that you will? Absolutely. Such a booming business as this. I can't fathom a more delicate choice of my investment. It's really the perfect business because think about it. Everybody sleeps. Everyone is a customer. See, this is why I should have brought Archibald with us. He speaks That's the totally truth. my name and how you say it. Mm-hmm. Every time. As we know. I think Darby's Darby. the only one that he can't mispronounce. <laughs> I, I'm my character trait is that I love capitalism and business ownership. <laughs> <laughs> so are you on your way back to Darby Manor? I believe so. Unless, any, unless either of you have business to attend to. But my business here is concluded. So once you are back at Darby Manor, uh, the whole gang is reunited. Archibald has the cards. He presumably distributes them to to all of you, keeping an extra one for himself because he was given an extra one. At the moment, it doesn't look like there's anything really pressing that is demanding your attention. 
until I make that happen. Uh, does anyone have any intentions to get anything particular done tonight or go off on some mischievous adventure? I'm probably going to be studying the uh, chess game that I have. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> so that I can like analyze her positions and general Oh, the letters and stuff. for the correspondence yeah. game. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. How much time do we have, theoretically, available? Are we just thinking of like short errands that we would be able to do just kind of cursorily? Or... Uh, you have like maybe nine hours, I think, by my math. Oh, I would like to find um, the horsemen war and fight them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's there. And he's like, <laughs> she's like, hey, what's up? Ding, ding. <laughs> uh, August, make sure that uh, Paddington is well fed and that his mane is brushed. Um, make sure his pants are adequately stuffed with seeds and other various vegetations. Um, you know, taking care of himself. Um, I suppose checks in with Lady What's Her Fuck. Yeah. Just to make sure I'm on the up and up and not at the risk of losing my other eye. Oh, yes. Um, you are obligated um, for... I think you've almost concluded your week. I'm not sure on which day. You were supposed to spend a whole week spending one hour per night training uh, Lady Elizabeth Blackburn in... Uh, the green path. Uh, I assume you head to the chantry and you give her an hour long lesson in the green path. Indeed, I do. So while you were there, uh, Leslie Lane says, "Oh, hail and well met, Augustine. Uh, I see that you were here for your lesson with Lady Elizabeth. I wanted to tell you that uh, uh, our friend Jeffrey Lamprey." contacted me earlier tonight to tell me that he discovered something strange in his feeding territory which is the uh the 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 camp of the the gold miners the uh prospectors he said that he found possible evidence of occult activity i i think this falls under your purview as a member of the the prince's council Perhaps go there and take pictures of what he found. Uh, if you delivered pictures to me, I, I could study them and, and give any insight that I might have. But uh, he said that he observed things in the woods that uh, it sounded like it, it resembled very much uh, what we found in Shed Town with the dismembered animals arranged into five parts but uh, he said he stumbled upon a few of these in the woods around the prospector camp. I assume you will investigate it and we will find a solution to this problem and everything would, will be fine. Well, ta-ta! And he opens up a book that he was holding and, and walks away just reading it. Um, hmm. Kind of a silly question, but did I manage to get my hand eye retrieved from this place at any point oh no it's still your rooter's hand is still going to work in your idle time writing up notes about how the green path works it's still in a cage in the basement of the chantry just enslaved to do this for some unknown period of time though you now know the ritual so if you want a second one you know how to make a second one. Okay. Can I still see through its eye? Can I? Absolutely. Can I That's like the one of the main points of the thing. And I'm. Am I able to overcome its enslavement for any length of time with like raw willpower, or is it like? So the way it works is it's it's an extension of your own body. It is still your hand, and it's still your eye, and you have to consciously like switch over to the hand and have it do whatever you want it to do. It's still part of your body, just a part that's detached from you 
and in a cage with some pens and papers told that like you are told that you need to use it to always be writing notes about the green path and maybe at some point in the future it'll be released to you or it'll be destroyed who knows but you have full control over it is it still in the basement yeah absolutely it hasn't been moved uh am i able to see anything of note in the basement any what sorts of things are you looking for don't we have somebody that we trade uh the death cultist isn't he being captured it wasn't he being like held down there the oh um terry, terry medic terry medic um yeah uh he was taken down there you definitely saw him in a cage being like dragged down to the basement and taken to another room but uh the basement of the chantry is a labyrinth there are uh, a bunch of of rooms and you aren't in the same room as him anymore right okay um yeah, I guess bewildered by the brevity with which Lady What's Her Fuck, uh, uh, was it Lady What's Her Fuck or was it, um, Lord What's His Fuck? I don't know. I, uh, astonished <laughs> at the brevity with which I was greeted and dismissed, um, I, I think Augustine, like, actually takes the dismissal at, at face value and actually kind of, like, awkwardly turns and leaves and goes back to Darby Manor. And I suggest that that might be a good stopping point for us, unless if anyone wanted to do anything else real quick. Feels good to me. Cool. Well, we will call it right there for tonight's session. Uh, two points for everybody. Uh, does anyone have any ideas of what they might want to spend their experience points on how many do i have 12 uh i think you were looking at uh, yeah, i six, think i need like 20 or 16 16th for your fifth dot of something of dexterity i think no i think i want 20 for my sixth dot of strength okay either way still saving up I will also save up. Did I miss anything crazy at the end there? Augustine was told privately by uh, Leslie that Jeffrey Lamprey, who feeds in the Prospector Oh, I was I was there for that. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Uh, Darby, Archibald, saving up. Uh, Augustine, you have 23 points. Are you going to sit on those? Still waiting to pick up my second path of... Have you picked a second path? Roger. No. <laughs> okay. All right. It's. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's worth putting some some thought into. I was just kind of excited to find out what it what it might be. Are there any that you're leaning no. toward? Unfortunately, not yet. My brain is still a potato from all work travel. I've been home for a whole five days. Wild times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Even still, yeah, no, just whiplash mentally from it. But no, I, I, I don't have any decisive confirmation yet, but we will get there. Well, Excavo, you have seven points, and there's stuff you could spend that on. Uh, do you have any ideas? I mean, I've just been doing a lot of investigating. I have two points in investigation already. A third point would cost you... Four current rating times two. So yeah, that would be four points for your third dot. Oh. However, uh you recently got your second dot, so there will have to be a, a delay between that and your third dot. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay. Um You could save up for your fifth dot in computer. Hmm. I could do fifth dot in computer. Or even bumping up your mental stats, like intelligence. Well, I have four points in intelligence. Could I it's, really get a fifth one? You could, if you paid for it. It would be a while. Uh, well, I'll, I'll hold off. I don't know Okay. what specifically I want to live up next. So this was an interesting session. Um, 
Onion Jack has been laid to rest. This is possibly the conclusion of the story of Onion Jack. Um, no, there is a new Jack arisen. A new Onion Clark. It's New Jack City now. Oh my god! I was I was City. waiting this whole time to see if someone would say the phrase "Onion Clark." <laughs> I I have said "Onion Clark." I really wanted to say it, but I was like, "I'm going to hang back word. and see if someone else says it." Um. Uh. So there is that. There, uh, uh, Augustine got his, um, his his payoff for <clears throat> for cursing Jasper Boggs. Uh, there's all that weird stuff with the bed store. Excavo got a lot of information about. Not... I mean, uh, it is information. Really... It may not be easy to digest immediately, but it is information. So I don't know if it's either not connected or if it's like not the first time. I was really trying to decide if I should go to the library. <laughs> that was why I was asking the question. Like, do I need to go back further? The information that you got from your automated search, um, the stuff that people were writing about in like comments and newspaper articles and uh, in social media posts, um, the descriptions that they had and the, some of the pictures that they posted matched pretty much perfectly to what was happening yeah. in Shed Town. So... Your conclusion is so okay. it's it's too weird of a thing to happen to be purely a coincidence. So, so we're saying then it is connected, but is not the beginning of this plot. Okay. Excava thinks that is a fair conclusion to come to. Uh, okay. Whoever did this thing in Shedtown, it's reasonable to conclude that it's either the same person or another person working under the same like inspiration or orders or something, but like they have to be connected because it's too specific and too weird. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Mm, okay. That is a conclusion. Uh, anything else uh, you guys want to go over before we call it? Um, so I'm curious if I own this gun store, <laughs> do I also retain the employees? Hmm. Nope. Um, as soon it's as an empty gun store, <laughs> as soon as the owner left, um, he, he told all of his employees like, Hey, I'm not the owner anymore. We're shutting down. You guys are all going to have to get different jobs. Maybe you can apply when the it's new the owner <laughs> when the new owner opens it up. Maybe I can plug. Maybe I can tr uh, convince Nuclear Tech to, you know, uh, innovate and employ people from the gun store to to create laser guns. I was thinking <laughs> guns that fired seeds into things. Uh, it's guns that fire themselves. I feel like that's a <laughs> thing. Uh, Gun that... <laughs> they just zoom around just choosing who lives or dies on the streets. I don't know why the thought had just occurred to me, but yeah, like thinking in terms of <laughs> trying to try to begin larger machinations of silliness, like seed firing guns, which I suppose for Augustine would be more lethal than guns with bullets. I think so some things close to that do Poison exist. Dark. There are seed bombs that you can, they're like bath bombs, but you've throw them and they're like a little ball of seeds and people buy these and just like toss them wherever they think that there should be more like wildflowers. Right. But the, but protruding into human bodies. Okay, like that yeah, doesn't hurt enough. <laughs> it doesn't hurt enough. I mean, you could load a shotgun shell with anything and I'm sure like an acorn or two in a shotgun shell would uh, smart. Fair, fair. I just, I'm, I'm, Thinking about the fact that I've had stunningly low success with trying to cram seeds into things, oh uh, so maybe guns are the way to go. We arguably, found a little bit of success, I think. Well, keep right? in mind that you're to grow the seeds, you have to have physical contact with them. 
So it was advantageous oh. that you were using your hands before. I guess success is, you know, subjective. So, so I guess for this idea then to realistically occur, I would need like a human cannon and just like vigorously hold the seed out in front of me to be fired out of such You cannon. could make more hands to hold the seeds and fire those. Oh shit. Just just keep ch chopping them off and pulling eyes like, out. Like a li not hands. like a lizard. Just I would let you use a rooter's hand that way. It would count as <laughs> physical contact. Yeah, it's physical contact. Also, if you wanted to invest some points in adding like a new green path dot that uh, allows you to do some of the things you can already do, but just without physical contact, just with line of sight, um, oh. we can explore that too. Like a further development of your powers. Okay. Well, it, I thought, uh, I thought we put the kibosh on developing that just because we had already bestowed the decay ability on me. Yeah. It might be a delay. Okay, cool. It's doable. Uh, not not so, anything super serious. I'm just brainstorming. Like I said, the thought crossed my mind, and I was like, I, "Hey, I got these people on the wire. I should ask them." But cool. Thanks for indulging my curiosity. All right. So is this it? Yep. All I right. think we're good. Until yeah, next time. You. Later, y'all. Thanks for the great session, guys. Love y'all. Have a good night. Bye. -bye.